part two of uh, chapter 21. So drawing electric circuits. So when we're talking about electric circuits, we're talking about an existence of a battery, which is our power source, okay, or the voltage as a positive sign and negative sign. And we are talking about an existence of some sort of a resistance and a switch. This resistance can, uh, can be a light bulb, can be, can be you know, anything. But the point is that we have a positive part of the battery and the positive is going to give us the uh, electric difference. So you have a charge going all the way in a closed path all the way to the negative. So from higher potential to the lower potential, all of these charges will go through the resistance and through the switch if it's, uh, if it's on. Um, and then it will go back to the negative plate. So this is a drawing of an electric circuit. Energy and uh, kilowatts. So when I, I talked about it in the previous uh, physics and pre, uh, physics one, when the electric company sends you a bill, your usage is coded in kilowatts hour. They are charging you for the amount of energy you're using. Okay, because kilowatt hour is a measure of energy. Let's, let's take a look, kilowatt hour. Kilowatt is 1000 watt, kilo is 1000, right? And an hour is 3,600 seconds. So one hour is 60 minutes times one minute is 60 seconds. So this would be 3,600 seconds. If you multiply that, what is, by the way, joules per second? So this second and this second will cancel out. Okay, you will end up with 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joule which is the power of energy, okay? So this is, joule is energy. Okay, so they are charging you for the amount of energy you're using. So uh, resistors, we have two, uh, in fact, three different configuration of resistance in a circuit. Resistance in series, when electrons flow through the circuit with the resistance in series, they have no choice but to flow through each of these resistors. So if I have a current coming out of the positive part of a plate of the battery and then going through this resistor and then going through the other resistor and going back, the charge has no choice but to go through all of these resistors, okay? Uh, and the current through each resistor will be constant. So the current will be would, uh, going through resistor number one, would be the same as if the current through the resistor number two. So I, total I, is the amount of current that's going through resistor number one, going through resistor number two, and so on and so forth, okay? Voltage through resistors in series will add up. In other words, if you want to find the total voltage, so total voltage would be the voltage of resistor one, plus voltage of resistor two, plus voltage across resistor three, and so on. So I can use uh, Ohm's law to write I total, R total, V1 is I1, V1, sorry, R1, I1, R1, V2 is I2, R2, V3, I3, R3. And we know that the I's are the same, so I can cancel out I's from each side because they're the same, right? You can factor out I from this side and cancel it with the left. So what you have eventually is this. You have R total being R1 plus R2 plus R3 so on and so forth. So what it means is that you can replace these two with a total R. So you can say that I don't have this R and this R connected in series. And I can think that my circuit is a battery. And I can replace those two with only one resistor, which is R total. And that current is going through my R total. And that R total 
if the R's, if the resistors are in series, is R1 plus R2 plus R3, so on and so forth. So if you have resistors in series, the, the um, current go going through each resistor will be the same for all the resistors. And if you want to find what the total resistance is, you have to add the resistors. Okay, kind of like that. So let's talk about the properties. I just talked about it, but let's go over it one more time. When there is only one pathway for, for the current, okay, same current will pass through the resistors for each electric devices. So same current will pass through all of them. Total resistance of the circuit is the sum of the individual resistance. We know that R total is R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. The voltage of the entire circuit is numerically equal to the current in the circuit times the total resistance. Exactly, V equals I R, I total, which is the same for every single one of those resistors, and R total, okay? The total voltage in a circuit divides among the resistance uh, in the circuit. The voltage drops across each the element add up to the total voltage in the circuit. In other words, I have a big battery here, V, okay? I have resistor number one, resistor number two, resistor number three, resistor number four, and number five. So R1, R2, four, and R5, okay? And then I have current going through this, in this direction right? This R1, this resistor one, has a voltage across it, a voltage difference across this, right? Just like what we have here, there's a voltage difference across this battery from positive to negative, right? So this is V total, and this is V1. There is a voltage difference across two, which is V2. There is a voltage difference across three, V3, V4, V5, okay? And if you want to find a V total, you have to add all of these Vs. So V1 plus V2 plus V3, V4, V5, okay? So the voltage drop across R1 plus voltage drop across R2 plus voltage drop across R3 and so on will give you, if you add them up, will give you the voltage drop across your uh, battery which is, for example, if the battery is 12 volts, it means that the potential difference between positive and negative is 12, okay? The, the voltage drop across each device is proportional to the resistance. We know that because we know that V equals IR. We know that. So let's take a look at an example. So suppose you have a five, amp, uh, five ohms resistor and a seven ohms resistor connected in series to a 12 volt source or 12 volt battery. In other words, you have something like this. You have this being connected to together. So this is five ohm, this is seven ohms, and this is 12 volts, okay? I'm just gonna do some, um, some stuff. I'm gonna call this one, call this two, resistor one, resistor two, and I have a battery of 12 right there. And um, let's see what we were looking for. Find a total resistance of the circuit. So they are in series, so we can add them up. So our total in our case is R1 plus R2, which is seven plus five is 12, okay? Find a current in the circuit. So we know that the current is V over R. So in other words, this R12, sorry, this is not volts. This is um, ohms, okay? So the current that's going through five is the same as going through seven. And I can replace this with uh, a resistor of 12, uh, ohms. So I can, I can kind of say that I have a circuit that I can consider as 12 ohms here 
connected to a 12 volt battery. I can replace that. So uh, I is V over R, V is 12, R total is 12. So you have a one amp current going through this circuit, okay? So this current is one amp, okay? Now, find a voltage drop across each resistor. So in other words, find V1 and V2. We want to find those. So we know that V1 is I1, R1. I1 is the same as the other I's. I1 and I2 and I total are the same. They are in connected in, per, in series. So R1 is just one. R1 is five times five, which will give us five volts. And V2 is I2, R2, which is one times seven, which is seven volts. And just out of curiosity, V total should be 12, should be V1 plus V2. So this should be five plus seven, which is 12. Let's take a look at another example. Um, series resistors, uh, assume that the voltage of the battery is nine volts right there. And uh, that there are three resistors uh, connected and they are identical so whatever it is let's just call them r call them all of them r not r1 r2 r3 just call them r okay what is the potential difference across each resistor what is the potential difference across each resistor okay so what we know is that um, we have the same current going through them right so we know that i for the resistor number one, let's call them one, two, three. You know what, why not? R1, uh, R2, R3. So I1, I2, I3 are the same, which I just call it I. And I know it's given that they're identical. So they are identical. That means that R1 and R2 and R3, they are the same and I'm gonna call it R, okay? And um, I know also if I add V1, V2, and V3, I'll get V total, which is nine volts, right? So V1 is I1, R1, plus I2, R2, plus I3, R3 is nine volts. Right? So what I have here is that I is the same. I1, I2, R, I3, they are all the same. So I'm just gonna call it I. And R1, R2, R3 is the same. So essentially what I have is I, R, but multiplied by three will give you nine. So you have, you're adding three things that are identical, they are the same. So you, you can just multiply, uh, write one, multiply by three. So what you have here is that IR, which is the voltage drop across one of these resistors, is nine over three, which is three. Okay, so the answer is three. Let's take a look at another example we have in the circuit below. Uh, what is the voltage across R1? So let's, let's find what the voltage across R1 is. In other words, what it really means is this, if you connect a voltmeter here, cross R1, find a value that this voltmeter is showing you. So what we're looking for is this, we're looking to see what the V1 is in our case. All right, so, uh, Let's, let's write down what we have. We have a 12 volt battery, we have two resistors, R1 4 ohms and R2 2 ohms, and that they are connected in series, so I can replace them with, um, with another um, resistor, which I call it R total. So I know that R total here is R1 plus R2, which is four plus two, which is six ohms, 
okay? And I can say that instead of having these two, I have a resistor, which is six, six ohms, okay? So in other words, I have something like this, six ohms, and it is connected to a 12 volt battery. This is our total. I can think of it like this. So now if that's the case, I can find what the value for I is. I is V over R, correct? Ohm's law, which is 12 over six, and which is two amps. So the total current going through this resistor and through all of them, in fact, is two uh, amperes or two amp. And um, we want to know the voltage drop across R1. So in other words, we are looking for V1. That's what we're looking for. V1 is I1 R1, okay? I is the same for all of them because they are in series. So I is two and R is four, right? So times four, which will be eight. And this eight is in terms of volts. If I ask you what's the voltage drop across um, R2 is, you would do the same thing. So what, let's see what the V2 is. V2 is I2 R2. So I is two and R is two as well. This will be four volts. Add these two together, V total, this should be your, the amount of the battery, the voltage of the battery. Eight plus four is 12. So that's the, the voltage of battery. So the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across this will give you the voltage drop across the battery. So resistors in parallel. This is the second type of the configuration of the resistors in parallel. Um, as you can see that they are in parallel here. So one is up there, the other one is down here. When the current flows through a circuit and encounters resistors in parallel, uh, it has a choice, okay? It can either go up or go down. It can, so when, when the current is coming right here, it can either go up or go down. It can go all the way through all of these, okay? So a portion of it will go to the top resistor, a portion of it will come to the down resistor, okay? You can go through either of them. The current will be split, not a split to the half, will be a split between the two resistors. If the two resistors are identical, then half of the current will go up and half of the current will go down, okay? So it will be a split in half. But if they are not identical, if they are not identical resistors, then depending on who's the stronger resistor, uh, you know, uh, the current will be split uneven. Current through resistors in parallel adds, okay? So in other words, if you, if, you're, uh, if you have a current coming here, current I, for example, and then you have two resistors in parallel, okay? A portion of it will go to resistor one, I1, and a portion of it will go to resistor two, which I call it I2, and I call it, this is R2. And uh, what it says is that if you add these two numbers, I1 plus I2, if you add them up, you will end up having the total current, okay? So as I said, I1 and I2, if you add them up, we'll get the the I that's coming. So, so in other words, the I that's coming and a split at this point, if you add whatever that's going up plus whatever that's going down to, to either of these resistors, if you add them up, you get the total I entering. Okay. And the voltage across resistors in the parallel and uh, in the parallel uh, configuration are the same. In other words, the voltage across R1 is the same as the voltage across R2. Okay. So the voltage of R1 is equals to the voltage of R2 is equals, if you have like many of these um, resistors in parallel, voltage across three and so on, they will be the same uh, because they're connected to one another without any problem. See, this point is connected to this point, right? And this point is connected to this point. There is nothing in between. So they have the same voltage. And if you want to find the total resistance, there is another formula for that, 
1 over r total is 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3 plus 1 over r4 and uh, you know so on and so forth if you have two two r's if you have two resistors so that would be your uh, formula okay if you have two resistors then r total is r1 r2 r1 plus r2 this would be your r total okay now let's talk about some of the uh, the properties of uh, these resistors in parallel configuration i talked about it i want to go over it one more time each device connects to the same two points each device is connected to the same two points. They're the same right here. This device is connected to the same, to this point. This device is connected to the same point. So they're all connected to the same points. The voltage of the same will be the same across, across each of these devices or each the resistors. Current has a choice of which branch to flow through, uh, through. So it, it can go up or it can go down. Uh, the total current divides among the branches, but if you add them up, you'll, you'll get the uh, the total. So I total would be I1 plus, uh, would be I1 plus I2 plus I3 and so on and so forth. The amount of current in each branch is inversely proportional to the resistance of that branch. As the number of parallel branch increases, the overall resistance decreases. This is very important. See, the relationship we have is this, is one over R total is, is one uh, over R1, one over R2, one over R3, and so on. So uh, as the number of parallel branches increases, if you add more to this value, the overall resistance will decrease, okay? And the total resistance of a circuit is less than the resistance of an individual device. Okay, so in other words, R total is less than R1. R total is less than R2. R total is less than R3, and so on and so forth. Okay. Let's take a look at this example. Suppose you have a three ohms resistor and a six ohm resistor connected to a par in parallel to a six volt power source. So you have a um, two different resistors. One is three ohms, the other one is six ohms, and they are connected to a battery of six volts. So the six, the voltage is six volts. And let's call this one R1 and this one R2. Now, what we are looking for is um, the total resistance. So we have two resistors, one over R total, is one over R1 plus one over R2, or you can write it R total being, since you have only two, R1, R2, R1 plus R2, okay? So R1 times R2, three times six is 18, and R1 plus R2, three uh, plus six is nine. So you have two as your total resistance, two ohms, okay? And so that's part one of the example. What is the current through the circuit? We want to know what the current through the circuit is. That means that find I. So I is V over R. Okay, so I total is V over R total, which is two. And in our case, we have six over two and three amps will be our I. And what is the current through each resistor? So we have a three amp coming right here. A portion of it will go up, a portion of it will go down. So let's call this one I1 and this one I2. 
Okay, so I1 plus I2 would be I total. Okay, in other words, I1 plus I2 would be three amps. Okay, that's what it means, three amps. But we don't really know what I1 and I2 is uh, before, uh, uh, we don't really, based on what I have in, in the box, in the equation in the box, I can't really guess. It could be one plus two, it could be two plus one. Uh, we, don't, we don't really know what the I is until we, we find the correct value for it. How do we do that? We know that the voltage across each of these resistors in parallel are the same. So we know that V1 is equal to V2 and it's equal to V total, which is six volts. We know that. So in other words, we know that I1, R1 is equal to I2, R2. So this is coming from this part, all right? We know that. So if that's the case, then I can write I1 over I2 being equal to R2 over R1. Or R2 is six, R1 is three. Six over three. So I1 over I2 is two, okay? And in other words, I1 is two I2. So what it means is that every time I see I1, I can replace it with two I2, okay? Now, let's bring this back down here. Let's bring our friend right there. Let's bring it back down here. It says I1 plus I2 should be three, okay? I1 plus I2 should be three. And I know that I1 is two I2, so I can replace it. So two I2 plus I2 is three. In other words, three I2 is three and then I2 would be one, okay? And based on what I have there, I1 is two I2, which is two times one or just, or just two, right? So this is two amp. So we found I through each of these resistors. So, in a circuit to the right, which is right there, two parallel uh, resistors and connected to a 10 volt battery. What is the current through R1? What is the current through R1? So what we know is that they have the same voltage. The voltage across R1 would be the same as R2 and they're both connected to the battery. So the voltage across R1 is 10, the voltage across R2 is 10. Okay, so we know that V1 is equals to V2 and it is 10 volts. We know that. And so easy peasy at this point, V equals IR. V is 10, I is unknown, R is R1, right? So R1 is five times five, which means that I should be two amperes, okay? So lecture question number seven, point P and Q are connected to a battery of fixed voltage. So these two points across is connected to the same voltage battery. And so this constant does not change. As more resistors are added to the parallel circuit, as you add more to this parallel circuit, what happens to the total current in the circuit? So, uh, first of all, they all have the same voltage across one of them. And one over R total, 
is one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 and so on. If you keep adding resistors to this, to this scenario, okay, you are essentially reducing the total amount of R. So the R total, as, as you keep adding resistors to this configuration, the total amount of R, the, uh, the, the value for R total is, very, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So uh, this gets smaller, a smaller value. So now if V equals IR, okay, if you consider that, if this is constant, so this is a constant value. If R is getting smaller, if this is decreasing, then I here should increase, okay? Then I here should increase. And the type number three, so we had resistors in series, resistors in parallel, and type three is that the combination of those two, the combination circuits. Some circuits use combination of resistors in parallel and series. The standard problem solving technique is to reduce the circuit to a single resistor and then work backwards. Let's take a look at some examples. Series in parallel, um, um, and parallel circuit, series and parallel circuit. So in other words, I have a circuit, I have a battery, I have a, a configuration of these resistors that are parallel and series. For example, these two are in series, but then the result will be parallel with this one. Their result will be in series with this one. Okay, find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So what we are going to do here is to, um, called this one R1, this one R2, this one R3, and this one R4. That's what we're gonna do. So total resistance will be, uh, so this is, um, these two are in series. So we have R1, plus R2, okay which is 220 plus 250, uh, which will be 470 ohms. So this is the result of these two being in series. But then this result is in parallel configuration with this one, right? The result of these two will be parallel with this one. So I have R1, sorry. Um, let's call this R total of, one, so I have R total of one, R total of one being in parallel configuration with R3. Okay, so we have R3, R total of one over R3 plus R total of one, this would be the 180 times 470 over 180 plus 470, okay? So this would be the result of R total one and R three, okay? Whatever it is, you can put it in your calculator then that will be in, ser in, the ser in series with R4. So I have R R R4 up here, okay. And let's call this R total two. So then we have R4 being in series with R total two, and they both being connected in a series configuration to our battery, right? Then they are in series, so you have to add them up. So then the real R total is R4 plus R total two. So the whatever it is, 
uh, you can find it using your calculator. Let's see what we're looking for. Find the total current supplied um, by the battery. Should be super easy. The total current, V equals IR. Okay, so I is V over R total, the real R, R total, and then V is 24. R total, we have calculated it from this part. And then you can put in your calculator, boom. What is the voltage between A and B? The voltage between A and B, okay? Um, in other words, the voltage between R3, okay? So V3 is I, three times R3, okay? And you can find the current, so the current coming here. So the current is the total current, which you have found it here, by the way, All right? The current is getting here. A portion of it will come here. I call it I3. And a portion of it will come here. And I call it I, let's say two, okay? This I2 will go, go through two, battery, two resistors, and this I3 will go through one resistor, okay? So we know that I total, which you have found it up here, is I3 plus I2. And then these are, these two um, configurations, 470, amps here, sorry, 470 uh, ohms here and 180 ohms here, they are in parallel configuration. So in other words, you have uh, V of R total one being equal to V3. So that means I to R total one should be the same as I three R three. Okay. If that's the case. And then based on this, you can find the ratio of the I's. Okay. You can find what I two over I three is. Okay. This is R three. This is R total one. And then once you do that, just like the other example that I solved, you can use this and put the result back to here to find the I. Once you find the I, I3, then you put it right there to find the, the voltage difference process. What is the current uh, in, oh, what happened? So, What's the current in the 180 uh, ohms resistor? That's I3 that we just found right here. And what is the current in the 220 ohm resistor? 220, it is I2. See, I2 is coming here, and we have found it based on this relationship, I2. Okay, I'll leave that to you guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or uh, you know, email me, I'll try to uh, respond to that as quickly as possible but this is this is the way that we have to do it i have done it here um i have done that in one of these examples right here so you have you find the ratio between i1 and i2 or i3 and i2 in that case and then you use that once you use that you can find the value for each of them so voltmeters and ampmeters used to measure DC voltage and current. So it's important to know that you're doing DC voltage, okay? Uh, must be connected to the circuit in the particular way. This is very important, okay? Voltmeters are connected in parallel. Voltmeters must have a high resistors because they won't allow a lot of current to go through. Ampmeters are connected in series, so ampmeters must have a low resistors, resistance. 
multimeters, okay, they have everything in one, uh, one device, which is called multimeters, have the characteristics that they can be used to measure voltage, current, resistance, uh, depending on the you know, chosen setting. So let's take a look at the configuration first. How to connect the amp, um, amp meter. So if I, have a, uh, if I have a circuit like this here, I know that I have a, a current going through from the positive, from positive to negative. So I have a uh, I like that. And if I want to measure that I, I have to put something in my uh, circuit in a series way, so it, the charge will go through it and it can show me the amount of current. In other words, I have to put it right there or right here, doesn't matter, or right here. They will all show the same value for, uh, for uh, current. The most important thing is that it has to be in series, okay, in series with all of these devices. For voltmeter, it has to be parallel. So if I want to find the voltage across R2, I have to connect the voltmeter in the parallel fashion. So this voltmeter should be uh, connected to, the, to, the, to this R2 in a parallel fashion. One side of it connected to the one side and the other side being connected to the other side. So this voltmeter uh, should be um, placed parallel to the device. You cannot put a voltmeter here. It is not acceptable. Okay, you can't do that. So, um, home appliances are wired in parallel. Okay, that means some voltages, same voltages available throughout the household. Okay, if one appliance fails to operate, the others are not affected. That is very reasonable. Uh, allows uh, for a lot of current making wires hotter, and that's the problem. Now, in order to fix that, uh, we use fuses and circuit breakers. So these are the two things that we use in order to fix that problem. When a maximum you know, amount of current is detected, then the fuse will blow and break the current. So uh, in older set of Christmas lights, when one goes off, all the lights will go off. I'm pretty sure if, if uh, some of you have experienced this, that one of your Christmas lights are going off and then the rest will be just you know, not working. Uh, this is the old fashion of this because we have a, you know, a burned light bulb of this Christmas lights is, is, is looking like a open switch. So kind of like this, that the switch is open. So that the, the current is, it's like there is a, a cut in your circuit. An option is to, to wire the light bulbs in the parallel, okay? And then that's what the, uh, the most of the current age uh, Christmas lights are doing. The total resistance is lower than the resistance of one of the, which is very good. But the problem is that it requires a lot of wiring. The solution for that is that each bulb is wired to parallel with a shunt resistor. Those combinations are then wired in series. So the shunt, which is the resistor, and the, uh, all of these uh, parallel light bulbs are uh, being connected in series. Okay. So when a bulb goes off, current flows through the shunt resistor. So the, so the circuit is still closed, but the light bulb is not working. I hope that makes sense to you. So Kirchhoff's rules or Kirchhoff's laws, we have a junction rule, which is the total current entering the junction is equal to the current leaving the junction. We have seen this before. We have seen it in the uh, examples that we have solved. If I have current coming through this junction and it's splitting to two, okay, I1, for example, and I2, I can write that I is I1 plus I2. So the amount that's entering this, this point should be equal to the amount that is leaving. Okay, so I in should be equal to I out. All right. Um, it utilizes the conservation of charges or what we have, we call it 
uh, loop rules. So the sum of the voltage drop, sum of the voltage drops in a closed loop is equal to the sum of the voltage series, rises, sorry. So in other words, in, it will end up being zero if you do a closed pass for these voltage drops. The voltage across each element in a circuit add to zero. If you add the voltage drop across all of these elements, you will end up having a zero at the end. Or, let me highlight this because it's very important. If you add all of these voltages, voltage drops across, if you start from one point, if you add all of these voltage drops uh, as you move through your circuit, and you end up in the same point, then the voltage drop, if you add them up, should be zero, okay? So let's, let's, uh, let's do an example here, very quickly show you what I mean. For example, if you start from this point and you're going through R1 and you're going through R2 and R3 and let's say R4, and they are all connected to a battery, and you end up in the same point. So this is a starting point. So you start from here and you stop from here to, at this point. So this, this point is the start and the stop. You, you go through your resistor like that, all of your, your circuit like that, through all of these resistors. If you add everything, you're getting a zero. For example, you're having a voltage drop. If I start from here, voltage drop across R1 plus voltage drop across R2 plus voltage drop across R3 plus voltage drop across R4 plus voltage drop across our battery should be zero. In other words, if you add them up, you should get zero. So let's take a look at this example. Uh, draw the current in each branch of the circuit. Choose any direction. If your choice is incorrect, the value obtained for the current will turn out to be negative number, okay? Mark each resistor with plus at one end and negative in the other and uh, in a way that is consistent with your choice of current in direction step one. Outside a battery, conventional current is always directed from higher potential, which is marked as positive or plus, to the lower potential, which is marked with negative, okay? Add up the voltage drops across each element if, if you travel to the same, uh, traverse uh, the element from positive to negative, it is negative V, um, and if you go from negative to positive, it's positive V. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this example here, what we have. Um, so this is the starting point for me. Uh, I start from here and I will back to this point, I will stop at this point, okay? So I start from this one, I go through the current, okay? So I, am, uh, I start from this point, I am leaving the battery with the positive, so I have a positive 20, 24 volts, and then I come here, I have a voltage drop across this, uh, this resistor, which is 12 times I. So V is IR, right? And um, I am leaving it with a negative sign here because this is connected to positive and this is connected to negative. So, and by the way, when you have two uh, batteries, you can easily find which one is winning. This is 12, 24 volts difference. This is six volt difference. Which one is winning the game? One of them is creating a current in a clockwise direction. The other one is creating a current in the counterclockwise direction. So which one is winning? This 24 is bigger, so this is winning. So that's why this, this part is ne negative. Even though this part is connected to a positive side, but it looks like that this uh, battery does not even exist because uh, because we have we have a bigger bigger um, battery here a 24 volt battery here okay so uh, I get to the another battery and I'm leaving the battery with the negative so the voltage drop is negative six volts 
I am coming here, I am leaving this with a negative, so uh, the voltage drop is negative eight times R or VI, so v, VR, uh, eight times I, and I end up at the same point as I started, so it should be equal to zero. Okay. Once you do that, once you do that, you will end up in an equation, which then you can easily solve to find the current or I. Okay, it is very important to have the same point. So let's take a look at another example. So. Example number nine, draw a current in each branch of the circuit and choose any direction. If your choice is incorrect, that's fine. The value obtained, <coughs> excuse me, for the current will turn out to be a negative number. Okay, use the junction rules to write the equation for the current. So, and then at point B, right there at point B, I of A and I of B are entering and I of H is leaving. So in other words, we have I of B and I of A is coming to point B and then it will, uh, you have I of H leaving the, the circuit at point B. And at point B, um, um, so in other words, you have two currents coming in, I of A and I of B coming in and then you have I of H leaving that point Okay, so one more time, you have a current, so let's, let's take a look, deeper look. You have a 14 volt battery here and a 12 volt battery here. So this will produce a current of I of A going in this direction, okay? The 12 volt battery will produce a current I of B in this direction, okay? And they will add up at this point. They will meet at this point, so they will be combined. So you have two I's coming in, IFA plus IFB, and this will be equal to the current in here, so in IFH. At this point, at point E, it will split again. So you have IFH coming in, it will split to two I's, okay? So we have this, this kind of a relationship between the currents uh, in our circuit. All right, so when you're looking at this, it is important to identify the direction of the current for each of these uh, portion. So you have three uh, parts. You have, you have to write down. So now what we know is, um, we know the direction of the current in each of these, okay? So we have to do three things, three things. Okay, first one is to write the um, Kirchhoff's law from one of these points. So starting from C, so um, starting from C, going to D, then going to E, then going to B, and then going back to C, and then the, if you add all of the voltage drops for all of these objects, you should get zero. Second thing you need to do is to write the voltage drop starting from B, going to B, and then from B go to, C, to E, then from E going to F, from F going to A, and then from A going to B again. Add everything together, getting a zero. The, this is the second one. The third thing you need to do is uh, going from point A, going to B, going to C, going to D, E, F, back to A equals zero. So in other words, you have a smaller circuit here, a smaller circuit here, and then one big circle, one big circuit here, okay? So if you do that, you will end up having a uh, system of equations that can be solved together. Plus, one of the very useful things that you know is this relationship. So you have three equations that 
uh, acts as a system of equations and then you have a junction rule which is i of a plus i of b equals i of h i am going to write one of these just as an example let's do for example the top one okay if i want to do the top one i started from point c going to point d i have 1.2 so i am leaving the the uh, the resistor with negative so i have negative 1.2 times i of h okay and then from point d to e i have nothing from e to b i have two things i have a 12 volt battery i'm leaving the battery with the positive so plus 12 and then i am going to this resistor uh, so i and i'm leaving it with a negative sign so i have a negative uh, point zero one times i of b and I'm at point B right now, and I'll go to point C without any uh, without anything in between. So ending up at the same point equals zero. Okay. If you do the same thing for these two others, you will end up having a system of equations. So for example, and this is I of B by the way. Not I two. This is I of B. Okay. So if you do that, you will have a system of equations for I of H and I based on I of H and I of B and based on the resistors, okay? So this is only one of them, but you can do the same thing for the other closed path. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at, for example, number three. You're starting from point A, going to point B, there is nothing in between, going to point C, there is nothing in between. From point C to D, you have uh, a, a uh, resistor, leaving it with a negative sign, right? You're entering it, you're leaving it with a negative sign. So you have 1.2 times I of H. From D to E, you have nothing. From E to F, you have nothing. From F to A, you have two things. One is a 12, 14 volt battery, so you're leaving it with a positive. You're entering it, you're leaving it with a positive, positive 14. And then you're entering here, you're entering this R, you're leaving it with a negative. So you have I of A times negative I of A times 0.1. You end up at the same point equals zero. So what is the current in branch P? Let's take a look at this. This is a very a junction rule again. So I have five here and eight total. So that means that I have three here. Okay, so three and five are eight and eight is coming here, two of this eight is coming down, so that means that six amp should, should be here because eight is here and it is split it to two and six, so six. So this is end of part two of our chapter, uh, chapter 21, we'll go um, to part three right after this. Uh, we're gonna go talk about capacitors in part three, so stay tuned, if you have any questions, let me know.